So heating and cooling is the biggest energy sector, and most heating and cooling is still delivered by fossil fuels. Here we generate most of the energy from the ground, we input some electricity using heat pumps, and so our system is, is mostly CO2 free, and it's substantially lower than using gas or, or oil or any other uh, fossil-based uh, uh, energy. What I like about this research is that it really has a practical use and it can end up in many buildings that people will live in, so it really makes a, an impact for the world. Yeah, so this building here at the Green Village draws the energy from the ground. Uh, shallow geothermal energy is a system that's been used for quite a long time, but this is unique because the energy uh, 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 system is built into the foundation of the building. And so it's a relatively simple idea. We have pipes within the foundation piles and a, a fluid is circulated uh, through the pipes. And if you want to heat the building, you circulate a fluid that's a bit colder and it heats up as it goes through the ground and you utilize that temperature difference to, 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 to give you the energy needed to heat the building. Uh, in the uh, summer, when the building like this might become quite warm, you can utilize the same system also for cooling. And you do exactly the opposite. You push in a, a, a fluid that's a bit uh, warmer through these pipes, it cools down as it goes through the ground. You again utilize a heat pump and you can generate the, uh, uh, the cooling that you need for a building like this. So what's nice about these systems is if they work well, then people really won't notice that they're there. Your buildings can still be warm, they will be cool in the, uh, uh, in the summer, and so on a day-to-day -day basis they won't really affect us. What they will do is allow us to, to substantially lower our carbon emissions. What is unique is that we're measuring exactly what's happening in the ground, we're measuring what happens in the foundation piles, and we're seeing how that affects the building. In the Netherlands, we have quite soft soils, and many of these systems have really been applied in, in stiffer soils, which means that you don't get any movement of the soil. So here in the Netherlands, it was really important to measure exactly what's happening, seeing if, if the piles move, seeing as they, they, they change in size as you, as you increase the temperature and they shrink when they cool. And we wanted to make sure that whether that affects the building in any way or not. What happens is that that causes then the foundation and the building just to move slightly. Um, and what's really important is that we make sure that this movement uh, is within bounds that the building can take, that we don't cause any structural problems. Energy pile foundations can just be put underneath new buildings, but there's many structures that can go into the ground. For example, if we build new train stations, we can also uh, uh, put these, these heat exchangers in, in the walls of the train stations that are underground, and we can really put, uh, uh, get energy from all of these structures. And so if we tackle heating and cooling and we build heating and cooling into urban environments which uh, uh, generate the most of the carbon emissions, then we can really start to tackle CO2 emissions and this can really build towards meeting our, our Paris uh, agreements.